So many people move to the City of Angels to make it big. Some days you feel like nothing more than another small speck of dirt in the grime-encrusted streets. Maybe that's why you joined. Maybe you just wanted to feel like you belonged to something important for once. You used to try and convince people it wasn't a cult. you tell them it was just another way to find like-minded friends or community building. Whatever you could say that would make them stop asking questions. But you remember their skepticism. The side eyes. It only made you more resolved. At first it felt powerful. Maybe there really were forces in the world you didn't understand. It was exciting. Like a current of electricity up your spine. This could be it. This could be what sets you apart from the mindless cycle. But then that feeling soured. The more you listen, the more you learned. The more you learn, the more your gut told you to run. But could you? You had never heard of anyone leaving, and thanks to your enthusiasm, you had found yourself as part of the inner circle. It all started to feel like a train careening towards something you wanted no part of, but you couldn't get off. And then something happened. The months of research and failed rituals weren't for show after all. You had never felt real palpable magic until now. Before this, you didn't even have a word for it. But you did now. Evil. Hi, I'm your host Z, and welcome to The Stash. Today we'll be talking spoiler-free about Straight Back Games co-op survival horror game, Devour. Devour is a 1-4 player co-op survival horror game from Straight Back Games, and it's honestly scary as hell. Pun intended. <laughs> we never talk spoilers here on the stash, but thankfully there isn't many to avoid. However, I will skirt around a few details that would otherwise give away some progression plot points. From the start of the game, you're given the backstory of the Watchers of Azazel, a satanic cult you belong to based in the Coyote Valley with the aim of summoning Azazel itself. You then have the option of selecting between six different members of the cult, plus one unlockable character, each with a brief and sometimes quite campy backstory of why they joined said cult. I have to say I appreciate the humor added here because it adds nice levity to the situation, and honestly, once the game starts, the only thing you might be able to laugh at is the shrieks of your fellow players. <laughs> This lobby is where you can form groups and add up to three other people to play through the experience with. I highly recommend playing with others if possible, whether it be with friends or through public servers. The game can be beat on your own, but damn, it's hard. The creators added functionality to make it more doable on your own, but you will definitely be in for a tough ride. On the flip side, the game adds difficulty the more players you have, so teamwork will be a necessity. Once you start a new game, you'll be presented with a brief but fitting cutscene, with surprisingly good voice acting for an indie title, and then immediately dropped into the map. It's worth mentioning here that there are, as of writing this, two maps. You'll want to choose the farmhouse first if you want the full story, as the maps act as a progression of the narrative. I absolutely love this feature, and I think it should be implemented more in these styles of games, but it could trip up brand new players. You'll spend the first few minutes using only a flashlight to explore the map. Each map feels very different. The farmhouse is more open and revealing. The asylum has a distinctly claustrophobic feel to it, so pick your poison. Just remember what I said about the maps and their ties to the narrative. As you explore, you'll come across journal pages strewn about that will give you some insight into what exactly is going on and possibly drop some hints as to how you need to proceed. The environments are really excellent in Devour and not only paint a dark and foreboding atmosphere but also give way to a strange sense of comfort turned on its head. The cult compound feels lived in and even inviting at times, while the asylum's fireplace and velvet furniture seem like a safe haven against the roaring thunderstorm outside. However, both maps simultaneously really hit home that feeling of isolation. This is your problem to solve, after all. 
Another thing I really love about the environments is the way they change as you progress through the game. I won't say much more than that, but it really serves to ramp up the suspense and progresses in a way that leaves you damn near frantic at the climax. Now while the maps change, the gameplay loop stays very similar. You'll search for keys to unlock closed doors and locate an altar somewhere in both maps. To exercise the demon you'll encounter, you'll need to collect sacrifices and the catalyst to commit said act. Now, I will say, the game does require you to sacrifice goats and rats, and while they are clearly demonic versions of themselves, it did have me feeling a bit cruel and evil myself, which could be a big turnoff for some people. The sacrifices are not gore-filled by any means, and I know for most it won't be a deal breaker, but I did feel it was necessary to mention. However, it was that exact feeling of crass indifference that really nailed home the fact that my character is indeed part of this cult, and their reasoning would most certainly be to do whatever it takes to achieve their goal. So I was on board. You'll have to make 10 sacrifices in total to achieve your goals of exercising the demon. With each sacrifice enraging the creature to an increasing degree, the creature will rage and hunt players until stunned with your only real defense in the game being the UV function on your flashlight. The two main creatures of each map are terrifying. Their movements and incredibly exaggerated features stir up an uncanny valley feeling. Their disturbing and sometimes sad voice lines almost convince you you might just be making things worse. It's safe to say that they will stick with you for a while. You'll also be pursued by Azazel's smaller minions that increase in amounts the further along you get, forcing you to really plan your movements and conserve your flashlight's battery life. It's a simple gameplay loop, but it's very, very effective. If the demon catches you, you're dragged to a random location on the map and left in a somewhat ghost world where you can freely watch the demon's movements and report it to players. Then, they can try and reach you to revive you with the very scarce first aid kits found throughout the map. However, if you're playing solo and you get down, it is game over, so I would try and collect resources at the beginning of the game when exploring, so you don't have to later on when things are much harder. I should also mention that the devs recently added batteries as a resource that somewhat amp up your flashlight's effectiveness, and this does really help in solo play. Devour has an interesting pace. In the first few minutes of gameplay, you're free to explore and even encounter the main creature without much incident, but as soon as you begin the ritual, the game hits the gas at a frantic rate. While there are some genuinely creepy moments and environments, the experience relies heavily on jump scares, which for me in this subgenre of horror game works to great effect, but I know that isn't everyone's style, so consider this your warning. Devour is loads of fun. Its simple gameplay, twisted art style, and co-op capabilities make it an excellent experience. Beneath the layers of jump scares and thick choking atmosphere, there's a sense that no matter what you do, no matter how hard you fight, it may already be too late. But I promise you will be disappointed if you don't try and find out for yourself. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed yourself, please consider subscribing to the channel. We put out new reviews every Friday. And if you'd like to come hang with me and watch me play some of these spooky games, head on over to twitch.tv slash Z-Man Stash. Z-Man S-T-A-C-H-E. Stay spooky, and I'll see you soon.